So yeah, so up next, we have uh, Preston James, who is local, and he is the head of Div Inc., which and we have a exciting partnership with uh, Preston's, Preston's organization and the Filecoin Foundation for the Centralized Web, uh, which we just announced, I believe it was just last week, right? Um, so the launch of a new uh, Web3 Social Impact Accelerator um, in conjunction with FFDW. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Preston to tell us, give us the details. Right. Very exciting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Let's see where that. Uh, There's a microphone in there. Yeah, you go ahead and use the podium there. You wouldn't mind. Okay. All right. Awesome. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I am a local leader. Um, microphone. Okay. All right. Uh, how's that? That better? All right. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, so um, I'm uh, Preston James. I'm the CEO, uh, co-founder of Div Inc. Uh, we are a nonprofit uh, tech startup accelerator uh, ecosystem builder based here in Austin. We started it back in 2016, and, uh, and we've also expanded into the Houston market uh, in 2020, 2021. And so since that time, we've had over 100 uh, startups go through our accelerated program and uh, really uh, get ready for some uh, at the early stage. And we're focused exclusively on BIPOC and women uh, tech founders. So I want to just kind of kick off and really just, you know, put a shine a light on, and we, I think most of us already know this, is the evasive entrepreneur uh, equity in our society. Uh, essentially, entrepreneur inequity, right, we know is sort of like the biggest, one of the uh, most unrecognized contributors to uh, the racial wealth gap in the United States. And the social inequities, as we all got a chance to get, you know, had the spotlight on uh, during the pandemic are pervasive in, in our society. So the problem is, you know, we, obviously there's so many barriers associated with, within the innovation ecosystem in itself. But the power of entrepreneurship, inclusive innovation is essential, right, to our economic growth, uh, to our um, uh, prosperous society, as well as our equitable future. And then what I get excited about is when we all come together and try to deliver on the promise of what entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial equity can actually bring. So just very quickly, yes, sir, you waving? You had a question? Oh, no, no, I was waiting for a question. Okay, somebody's got your attention, huh? Um, so very quickly, uh, the, the, the barriers associated with uh, where BIPOC and women founders face within the uh, ecosystem are associated with really what comes down to one word, and that's access. Right? It's a lack of access to the education and best practices, know-how, lack of access to the human and social capital, right? getting access to those mentors, as, as a previous speaker was, Katie, right, Katie? Yeah, I was talking about getting access to mentors and human and social capital, right, that's available. And then also lack of access to financial capital, right? And a layer on top of that, you know, there's, there's the bias, right? And so all of that really uh, for BIPOC and women, many BIPOC and women entrepreneurs, it really creates these barriers in terms of where they're getting started, how they get access to that capital, getting customers, and really being able to scale, right? So just give you a quick example, right, on getting started. This is just a simple example. We'll see similar numbers for Hispanic uh, entrepreneurs as well. But we start with less, right? And this is just an example. It's just 3x less, 3x three, three, three more, if you will, in terms of financial capital that folks start their businesses with. Look at the equity capital and investment into companies, right? Uh, when we speak of venture capital, so women in general for this, for 2022, actually received less venture capital than they did in 2021. 
and that is actually 2% of all venture capital, right? Women of color, specifically black and Latinx women, get less than a half a percent, right? Black and Hispanic combined actually get just about 2%. So by no means is this equitable. So I had to stop and one day and ask myself, does it all even matter? And at the end of the day, hell yes, it matters. <laughs> hell yes, it matters. And, and the reason, and some of you may or may not know, but the wealth gap in the United States continues to, to grow, right? Depending on what report you look at, it's 10x, 13x between black, Latino households and white households, right? And it's a drag on our economy, right? According to McKinsey, it's gonna cost $1.5 trillion, right? In, in, in basically stunted economic growth because we're not unleashing the power of inclusive uh, economy in the entrepreneurship space. So here we are, we are in, in the midst of social inequities in our society, right? Um, basically, anywhere you touch, you'll see inequities, right? In, in terms of the poverty space, fintech, education, um, healthcare, right? Uh, workforce development, it's just inequities in every space that we're, we, we see across our society. And probably the most important one we see is this climate tech. And even though we celebrate some successes, those successes don't often um, propagate into communities of color uh, in an equitable fashion. So we still have a lot of work. And best ways to solve this is really in a very inclusive way, right? Tapping into the, the network of entrepreneurship and innovation. So the roadblocks to entrepreneurship, and some of these are very, very obvious, and some of them are not, right? In terms of BIPOC, BIPOC and women founders. Granted, you know, these are some of the um, barriers for all entrepreneurs, but even on a deeper level for BIPOC and women uh, startup founders. And so you can see here, you know, education, social capital, financial capital, getting access to cameras, all the things that I've already referenced, that is preventing folks to getting on this other side of being successful entrepreneurs where they're building scalable, high impact businesses. But this is where I kind of get excited, right? Um, we've got D-Web, Decentralized Web, that is hit. All the talk in town, what's happening in the industry, Web3, et cetera, right? Different te new technologies emerging, the next evolution, et cetera. All of them are coming together. The challenge that has traditionally and historically been a factor for BIPOC and women entrepreneurs in the innovation space is being sort of on the, the front end or the early end of participating in these technology evolution. Traditionally, they've been behind the curve and not being able to accept or embrace or get access to technology. So it's critically important, right, with Web3 and the D-Web right, now coming to the forefront, how do we create that awareness? How do we uh, inspire, right, these innovators to come into this space, leverage these technologies so they can actually solve big problems in our communities. So you layer these D-Web on top of the barriers that already exist, it's pretty daunting, right? And we need to push forward and make sure that happens. So for us, right, a very exciting moment for us to really kind of help push and take that lead Really excited to, to announce that DivInc and Filecoin have struck a strategic support partnership, if you will, to launch this D-Web Social Impact Accelerator, which will uh, start in um, early September, late August, early September. Applications are open now for those of you who are interested in innovators and entrepreneurs. 
But we're going to, what we do, what we have been doing is removing those barriers and creating access to opportunities so that BIPOC and women entrepreneurs can build successful businesses. More importantly, we want to solve those social inequities in our communities via this program. And so this commitment here for us is multi-year commitment, right? That's going to run year round and to uh, I'm gonna refer back to Katie as well, is building that ecosystem, right, of community partners, of a network that has to continue to grow, right? And DevInc sees that itself as a ecosystem within the ecosystem, right? And we continue to help make it bigger and better but also creating space for entrepreneurs of color and women to be able to thrive, right? It's just a culture and a community to allow them to thrive, to always feel like they have a home, right, in terms of uh, them being able to be a successful founder, right, where they feel be a major part of. So for us, as we move forward, like, what are we, what are we looking to have happen? I've talked about catalyzing BIPOC and women founded uh, social enterprises. But even more so to make it happen, right, we need those customers and strategic partners, right, to become customers of those entrepreneurs, right? We need investor partnerships, right, for people to come in as investors to invest in these companies and, and, and trust, right, that these founders would deliver innovative, uh, social enterprises that can address the social inequities in our society. And major collaboration across the social impact ecosystem. Here in Austin, we have great partnerships with the Social Venture Partner Organization. There's also an angel network here called SWAN. It's the Southwest Angel Network. Those collaborations in, in conjunction with the University of Texas and, and uh, also Rice University up in, in Houston, allow us to provide those opportunities and access to resources. And then when you layer just Filecoin on top of that, that's getting access to the expertise of D-Web like none other. So we're super excited about that. Um, and of course, we're gonna continue to measure the economic growth and social impact, right? That's basically what we're in it for. We wanna bring innovation and the social uh, uh, issues to address them, to erase these inequities as much as we possibly can. So, lastly, um, I would say join us on this journey. If you have a little bit of excitement burning under your rear end there, you, you're thinking about you want to get jazzed up about it, I, I encourage you to, to uh, join us. If you're a founder, definitely apply here at, at the link there. Uh, the applications are open already. If you are a corporate partner, community partner, uh, investor, you know, there's a link here for you as well. And for, for, if you know people who want to support this, right, um, have them really reach out to us and we would love to, to welcome more partners. I think the, the bigger, the better, the more, the merrier. So, um, so thank you, that's what I wanted to share. So thank you so much for your, all of your support and uh, Let's go make a difference in this world. Thank you. She said the first, the first cohort starts in September, right? That's correct. And then, and then how many cohorts do you plan on doing each year, or is it, is it kind of well, we'll to be determined? One. We'll do another um, in 2024, and then um, we'll have some other um, programs, activities that are happening throughout the year as well. Got it, got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So we're pretty proud. Very cool. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Preston, for, for your yeah. time here and for very inspiring work you're doing. And uh, it's an honor to be partnered with you in this. So, um, yeah, best of luck on the – hope you're able to – we're able to achieve these results that you're looking for here. Um, so really noble work you're doing. So thank you for your efforts, and uh, thank you for being here today. So we're going to rock it. We're going to rock it. <laughs> all right. All right, all right.